Hi everyone, we're back again. Um, I am in shock over the response to our last video. It kind of blew up on YouTube and I'm still trying to figure out why. But because we've gained so many new subscribers, I thought I'd reintroduce myself. My name is Bronwyn. We are a South African family living in Ireland. We've been here since September of 2019. And basically this channel is our journey here. And more than anything, it's, it's like a, a diary for, I guess I'm making it for the kids to look back on and maybe cringe a little. <laughs> um, but just, just to document our journey here. And if it helps anyone, um, that's amazing. That'd be great. But um, that's basically who we are. We're just a South African family living in Ireland and trying to figure out life. So because of the overwhelming response to my previous video, there were a lot of comments and um, quite a few questions as well. And I would like to answer them, um, but I don't think I'd be able to do that personally because there were so many of them. So what I'm going to do is our next video, I'm going to do a Q&A. So I'm basically just going to draw out all the questions that were asked and um, I'll answer them as best as I can. And I also think that that will be one of my last <laughs> um, topics of why we left South Africa. It seemed to raise a lot of emotion and um, there were amazing comments and we have the most incredible um, subscribers and thank you so much for being so welcoming and so encouraging and sharing your stories. I love hearing your stories of immigration um, but there were a few not so nice comments and um, I'm not going to react to any negativity because my story is my story. It's our personal story and um, any judgment of our story you know what, I'm just gonna, obviously I see the comments, I hear your point of view, um, but I'm not gonna react to them and I'm not gonna argue. Everybody has their own reason for leaving and um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I do appreciate all your comments and I will get to them and answer them in the next q and I have seen them, so thank you so much. So I would just like to say a huge thank you to those of you who supported our Buy Me A Coffee page. And it's just, I'm, we're just so grateful. And sometimes like words fail me and just your support and your kindness just means the world to us. So thank you so, so much. Now we've had a pretty interesting weekend, well, ended up being a bit of a flop of a weekend unfortunately because our youngest one Evelyn she decided that she was going to see if she could fly and fell off the top of a slide here in a playground and she fell quite badly on her back and she managed to fracture her elbow and her wrist so we took her through to Waterford um, University Hospital and we went straight through to A&E and they saw her almost immediately. It was amazing. We didn't have to wait very long at all, maybe five, ten minutes after filling in the forms. And we were taken straight through to the injury unit where they had a quick look at her. We expressed a little bit of concern that she had hit the back of her head and her neck. And so they sent us back into the waiting area so we could be assessed by um, an emergency doctor. So then we waited probably another five or 10 minutes and they called us through and we, they had a thorough look at her, asked us all the questions, what happened, how did it happen? And um, they then sent us th straight through to x-ray department. Um, and we sat, that's where we waited the longest, but look, it was Saturday evening. There were loads of people there. Um, Evelyn by that stage she was calm and more comfortable we spent a lot of time watching Miss Rachel and watching all sorts of things on the phone just to distract her and they took her through for an x-ray 
and which was the worst part because we had to manipulate that poor little arm just so they could get a proper sense of what was going on and so after the x-ray we went back and waited a little bit longer they called us back again saying look there are two fractures and um, they're going to put it in a cast and hopefully we can go home we'll see what happens put it in a cast um, see how it's sitting <clears throat> and then they'll decide what to do so after that we um, put a cast on and then they sent us back for another x-ray to see how everything was after that x-ray we got called in to see an orthopedic surgeon and he wasn't happy he wasn't happy the way the elbow was sitting it was quite a complex um, little fracture that had happened and the wrist one was absolutely fine he said that that would have healed easily but because the elbow one was slightly displaced they would need to take her into surgery so our hearts just dropped this poor little thing going into surgery so young um, they were thinking of putting some wires in the arm to hold it in place and it was just horrific for any parent to hear and so we'd arrived at the hospital with a nappy bag we weren't planning on anything we weren't <laughs> thinking that this would need surgery we knew that something was very sore with the arm we were hoping that it was just a sprain nothing too serious but look this is the way it happens so um james ran out quickly and got us some supper while um we were busy getting settled into the pediatric ward and you know what i can't complain it was top-notch service everybody was so helpful and um poor evie i mean we were sitting there for we eventually got settled into the ward probably about 10 o'clock at night so she was done with the day she was finished she wanted to go to sleep now so we quickly organized bottles and formula and um she still likes her nighttime milk bottle and we tried to get some food into her uh, because she wouldn't be allowed to eat from midnight and my little one likes to have a water bottle in the night and I was thinking I don't know how I'm going to get through this one anyway so we settled her down she fell asleep pretty quickly I had um, a KFC wrap for my dinner at half past 12 at night James came home to the boys our wonderful neighbor had taken care of the boys so everybody was safe and sound and we settled in for a night's rest although it didn't end up being very restful because Evie cried all night and we were in a general ward so she was keeping all the other babies awake poor thing so eventually top tip if you want to get a private ward a uh, private room in the hospital get your child to cry because they moved us at about half past three in the morning to a private room which was great and she settled so quickly after that and I think maybe because I was more settled because I think I was stressed because she was making a noise and she was waking up the other babies and they were crying and anyway so the, the night in the hospital wasn't fantastic and I felt like death warmed up the next morning but the staff were wonderful they kept checking in on us making sure we were okay and Evie was second on the list for the operation the next morning so by half past nine they came and fetched her and they just prepped her and the surgical team were just so good with us they kept us calm they explained everything that was going to be done or maybe would be done and the surgeon said he would try his absolute best to not have to put in the wires so like we 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 felt that we um that she was in good hands I was allowed to go into the operating room with her and hold her hand while they put her under. They just put a little gas mask on her and put her to sleep. She wasn't happy about that at all. But it took about 45 minutes to an hour for the surgery to be completed. And in that time we ran and quickly got some breakfast and a well-deserved cup of coffee. And then they called us back. We went to fetch her and anyone who's got a child knows the absolute oh 
when they wake up after their anesthetic, I don't know, maybe it's not the same for every child, but Evelyn turned into a monster. She was kicking and screaming. I think she wasn't even fully awake or aware of what she was doing, but she was pinching and hitting and the poor thing. She was just so distressed. I uh, don't think she was in pain. I think it was just the confusion of the anesthetic. And um, so we just took her. Luckily, we had a private room. Again, I was just like, just so grateful for that. Could just close the door. She screamed her head off for a while. We held her. We loved her. And um, we could give her some water and, you know, some, something to drink. Gave her another milk bottle and a yogurt. And she just settled down. And then it took from the end of the hospital surgery it was about half past 10 ish 11 and then until we eventually left there around four o'clock half past three in the afternoon and they just observed her make sure she was okay and we had the orthopedic surgeon come back into us and explain what happened and that they didn't put the pins in and that we need to go back to them in two weeks time and look, she was an absolute trooper and she's back to her normal antics. Um, she is slightly more clingy than usual. She doesn't leave me alone for two seconds. The only reason we're talking now is because she's having a nap. But we did have to pay 100 euros because we didn't have a referral letter from a doctor. But um, that's all that we have to pay for that hospital visit. So I just wanted to share that with you a little bit of our, <laughs> our absolutely chaotic weekend. And so I didn't initially really see um, the video going mad. It was just a busy week in the weekend. And I was so shocked to see we've gotten over 50,000 views on this on my previous video. So um, again, thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, the next video will be the Q&A and I'll answer all your questions and have a wonderful rest of the week and we'll see you again soon. Bye!